four yards. Whoa. I picked up George Bird Evans' book and I was looking at the, the black and white photos in the middle of the book. You can just flip right to the middle, they, they stick out. And um, if you flip through those photos, uh, they're extremely unique in that there are things in those photos that don't change. And, and in effect, most of the things in the photos don't change. So if you look at those old photos, the only thing that does change um, in the photos is the clothing that the people wear. So if you, if you look at the photos, uh, the dogs, the guns and the birds are all identical. It could be a photo from yesterday or, or, or when we went out today. Um, it could be a photo from from today. The only thing that's different is the, the clothing that we wear. So. Well, um, the idea of a, of a shotgun um, or rifle or just a fireman in general as a legacy that you pass down is something that I know Griffin and Hal, um, you know, that's what we try to try to put out there is crafting a legacy that we're really um, that that you're really looking to um, be able to pass down not only the tradition but but the whole uh, the whole scope of, of what you um, what you do your pastimes and then the guns and, and the rifles and the things that are involved in that fall directly into that idea of a legacy. So you have to make this philosophical jump from knowing that I can shoot my. 870, my 1100, whatever it might be, your Mossberg, your whatever gun it is that you're shooting, especially when you jump to a side by side, the sight plane is different. Um, there's some some changes, some things to get used to, but it's it's this um, philosophical change that goes on where you say, you know, I'm gonna accept the fact that I'm probably gonna miss for a while. I'm probably gonna have a hard time using these kind of guns and, and getting used to them, but something in that experience is gonna make it better in the long run. And, and I have found that to be strikingly true. Um, there is something to be said for walking through the woods with, with a fine firearm. A um, fine double is, is, uh, is unique. It, it fit, finish, the way it feels in your hands, the way it points in the woods. Alan, here. You want to sit in a stump? Have you ever shot a double before? Uh, no, right no, this here. is Alan, first, first double for here. sure. Good boy, hey, hey. On Woodcock, that was uh, Whoa. something else. The history of the double gun in Europe, in particular in London between 1850 and 1900, there's a, a major uh, period of development there where um, they perfected the design. They really went from these uh, hammered hammer guns over to hammerless guns. Uh, there was a switch from black powder to smokeless powder. And all of these things um, sort of happened in a brief window of time. And a lot of the um, a lot of that technology and a lot of the, the development there kind of filtered into, um, into Europe in a way that um, a lot of these other makers, in particular Spanish makers or uh, German makers, would pick up on these um, traits of a London best gun. So when you talk about, um, you know, talk about guns like AYA, it, it's not as though they are um, out in left field and coming from some different place. They are, you know, fundamentally they're, they're using um, the the action styles, the the fore end attachment styles, um, the barrel making, um, a lot of those things are very traditional. And, and um, you know, I think that in particular a company like AYA, um, you know, they're they're not reinventing the wheel. They're not doing something that's so that's outlandish. They're just taking um, a different approach to it and making something that is attainable and um, well adorned, well fit, well finished, and and putting it out there to market. You know, my experience with AYA, we are, Griffin and Howe, um, you know, we sell AYA shotguns, we're, we're a retailer for them, um, but I, you know, come from uh, a lot of American, American made doubles, and it's kind of unique in the fact that, you know, it was a transition that I was able to make relatively easily from some of my, uh, you know, American shotguns that I'm used to, um, to picking up an AYA, and, and um, 
you know, once you get over the fact that it looks a little nicer, um, you know, the lines are sleek and, and the gun feels, it, you know, it does feel a little bit different, but, um, you know, it, it was an easy transition to make and certainly uh, an, an aesthetic one for sure. Every time I uh, remembered that I was carrying an AYA and I looked down, I said, oh yeah, I'm, I'm carrying this really, this beautiful piece of, uh, piece of art. So, um, that, that is, you know, in terms of practical experience, like I said, I, I shot the AYAs and they, they certainly um, handled well in the grouse woods. And I think, um, you know, I think they certainly are an effective tool there. I think that grouse hunting or upland hunting in general, but in particular since of, you know, the location, time and space that we're in right now, um, grouse hunting, woodcock hunting is something that um, almost inherently is passed down. There, there is this idea, and I've mentioned it several times here, you know, while I'm at, while I've been at, uh, at Pine Ridge, that um, there's a connection between people who grouse hunt. It doesn't matter if you come from the east or the lake states or if you're from, you know, the southern mountains where these birds are. There is a connection. You come, you come to a place like Pine Ridge and, and immediately you know the company you're in because they all pursue these same sets of values in terms of how the birds are harvested and, and what farms are using, what dogs are using. The whole, the whole concept of it is um, it's this package deal almost. But the good part about that is that um, you know, the, the folks that you meet will become your friends. I mean, there's no two ways about it that when you, you go to a camp, um, you will meet people and it's, it's open arms, uh, open arms policy. Everybody's welcome um, and, and come in and join the family. And I think for me that really takes on a new, a new level. So my father, like I said, my father got me into bird hunting um, and I treasure those experiences uh, greatly. I was a major part of, of who I was and who I became. And I recently, um, I have a two-year-old daughter and recently had a son and I cannot wait to pass this on to the next generation. I am excited beyond belief to try to do everything I can now to make sure that that is passed on to them. And I think part of that is becoming involved in a lot of what's going on in and around the conservation, the awareness of it, but also bringing other people in, uh, into the sport in a way that they enjoy it and can understand where we're coming from. because. This is it, this may be my personal story or my side of it, but I think that a lot of folks out there have their own story of how they got into upland hunting and what it means to them. But uh, as a group, um, this is a legacy that we can pass on. We just have to make it so. My name is Joel Pancala. I'm 34 years old, and I'm from Sandy State, New Jersey. very important to be able to pass that on. I, I think, at least for me, very important for me to be able to pass that on to my kids and I hope that there's still some slice of this left uh, when, they're, when it's their turn, when I can hand it off to them for future generations.